I think we imagine our lives as artists to go a little something like this. We get the big inspiration. We're mentally, physically, perfectly prepared. We sit down to paint and it just happens. It flows from us beautifully. And we stay seated, inspired, and motivated until that daggone masterpiece is perfectimal. Sadly, friends, the aforementioned artistic utopia rarely exists. Yet when it doesn't, what do we do? We beat ourselves up over it, yeah. Like we're committed entirely to upholding some odd stereotype of the ever-inspired, passionately motivated artist who can't eat, sleep, or do anything else for that matter until the precious work is done. Wrong! <laughs> it just doesn't work that way. And so today I'm going to give you a peek into how it actually does work for artists who are committed to pursuing this journey on a semi-regular basis, at least how it works for me. And I'm hoping that the five ways that I paint pretty fast will help you give yourself a break along this incredibly inspiring, but at times frustrating journey. So I have five ways that I keep my painting sessions inspiring, but fast paced so that I stay motivated. I work big on a smaller surface. I keep the layers simple. I add loose details in limited color palette. I stop early before I think I'm done. And I add bold, brave backgrounds quickly. Stick around, we're gonna get into each one of these. And there's one point that is super important that kind of buttons up this entire idea. I'm gonna tell you about it soon, stick around. Today I am using Academy 100% Cotton Watercolor Paper, the Art for Joystick palette, of course, a little bit of Dr. P.H. Martin's ink, and mostly the Half Inch Dagger Brush from my Art for Joystick brush collection. A little bit of liner action because what's a painting for me without liner brushes? And here we go. Starting with a sketch of this peony, and you could honestly skip this step, especially if sketching stresses you out, or yeah, you could trace from a photo of a peony. This video really isn't about the sketch, so I'm gonna speed through this one. And friends, if you really do wanna know more about sketching, I'm gonna link a few videos below, but let's continue on and get to the good stuff. Okay, but sketching is good, yeah, 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 but come on, let's face it, let's get to the painting. All right, I'm moving right into adding the first layer of watercolor. I'm going with a soft pink using that curved edge of my dagger brush, use what you have, and just roughing in some color. I haven't wet the paper first, I'm just going in kind of damp on dry and just adding really, really, really watered down color here and there. Some purples, some pinks, some soft, some brighter pinks, you name it. I'm definitely letting the texture of the paper show through here. So my approach is fast and loose because I'm not being too terribly precious about getting a smooth effect with the color I lay down. I'm definitely working from the center out in most cases and letting my brush really run out of paint because you can get some really cool effects and it lets you work quicker when you're really just using all the paint and moisture that's in your brush until you reload. Heading in with a clean brush filled with that tan color from my palette and a skosh of the fluorescent yellow. And yes, I double dip my brush because that's how I roll. I'm using the curved edge of the brush facing down, sometimes changing the angle of my hand holding the brush so that the point of the brush is facing down. And I'm basically dabbing and lifting, dabbing and lifting around that center as I'm adding color, adding pressure, dabbing and lifting. There's not a lot of drag going on while I'm painting the center of the flower. Now remember, this is the step one part of a stressless painting experience. So you don't have to feel all the pressure that I described earlier in the video. So the point is to work bigger on a smaller space. This paper is about a 12 by 12 inch, but I am making these peonies way larger than life. I mean, okay, maybe not way larger, but at least 30% larger than life. And that gives me room to move. That gives me a lot of space to kind of figure out the shapes and have a lot of place to splash around color. If I were working with these true to life size on the same size paper, I would feel a lot more pressure. I wouldn't have as much flexibility. So stress less painting, 
definitely work bigger on a smaller space, which basically means overscale. If you want to know more about this and dive deeper into it, I have a really cool video that I did recently. I'm going to link it below. As I continue in this step, it's really about just getting color down on the page. You might even go back to your pencil and sketch in some things, but you're really just trying to work as quickly as possible, but as instinctively as possible. So not spending too much time making any one decision. You don't wanna mull over exactly how much pink versus purple is on your brush or how much yellow versus that gorgeous emerald green is on your brush. You just wanna get into the palette, get the color on your brush, lay it down, make adjustments if you need to, but work quickly, instinctively, but mindfully. I find that the more that I stress and fuss and discuss over all the decisions that have to be made or could be made during a painting process, it just starts to feel really heavy and it weighs me down and it starts to leave a lot of room in my brain to create these fearful narratives. What might happen? How might I screw this up? What if I choose the wrong? Yeah, you get me. Now I'm heading into this second peony here, the smaller one, the much more deeper wine, burgundy, red, raspberry color. And I'm going right in, a la prima, like super dark right off the bat. And if you want to know more about my approach to that style of painting, where I start dark with watercolor and work backwards to light, which is the total opposite of what you would think, check out the video below because it's a really fun, freeing kind of approach. Moving on to step number two, which is keeping your layers simple. So the first layer is this Lucy watercolor wash over all the surfaces that I sketched out initially. Or maybe you didn't sketch and you're just kind of painting your shapes and you're ready for that next step. Now we're going to start adding some detail with our second layer. But the point here is to stay loose, stay kind of separated. And what I mean by that is if you notice yourself leaning in and getting closer and closer and closer to the page, it probably means you're getting too hyper-focused on the details and that you might need to take a breath, stand up and take a moment. Because when we get super, super hyper-focused, we also can get ourselves in this like fear loop of I'm going to screw this up. My next brushstroke could be the one that takes this all down. And we start to play this narrative in our heads. But I've noticed when I keep an arm's length, away from my painting or something close to that. I also am keeping some perspective and some distance from all the fear that happens in my brain as I paint. Now again, this is no shade thrown for those out there that love their details and love their realism and love getting really close. Maybe you even use a magnifying glass to get it all done perfect. No shade, if that brings you joy, chase after it but this video is for those of us who've tried all that and it doesn't quite work for us all right let's head into comments as i continue painting here let me know have you tried the realism thing was it for you did it energize you or did it just completely stress you out i want to hear your story let's talk about it down below and while you're at it if you're having a good time or at least you are curious about all of these things I'm talking about and you're still listening, would you give this video a boop? That's a like, I'd really appreciate it. So for me, keeping the next layer simple is all about looking at the next biggest shapes on the page. So with my sketch at the beginning, I was really mapping out the largest shapes, which basically were the big circle of the center of each flower and then the petals coming out from the center. So we basically had circles and ovals. So now I'm looking for the next biggest shapes and turning those into brush strokes that represent shadow or basically more detail at this point. Notice I haven't changed up my brush. I'm still using the half inch dagger. So while I'm getting more detailed strokes, thinner strokes, they're not as thin as what I could get with a liner brush because we're not there yet and we're not really going to get fully there with super, super fine details because we are trying to keep this easy, breezy, loose and stressless. And you can take a simple layer of details 
like this one, the bigger strokes, like I'm adding the purple right now on the left hand side. And wow, just a few dab and lifts with a varying amount of pressure on my brush. And I've got some incredible detail there. But remember, you can actually add more interest to a simple layer of details by dabbing in a second color while your first layer of color is still damp or wet. So basically what I'm saying is, is that even though this second layer and is probably our only detail layer in this painting, doesn't mean that the painting has to be super washy and breezy and loose. It can still have dimension and character and detailed moments, but they don't have to be fussed over to be effective. I read a biography once of Monet and it was about all the artists that were coming up during his time. But I remember one specific part about how he would contemplate one or two or a collection of brushstrokes for a very long time. And while that's certainly not my style, what is my style is figuring out the least amount of fuss that is needed to express a part in my painting in a super effective way. And so I love that thought and I want you to think about that that you could accomplish the same effect, the same successful feeling in that petal or in that flower center. But how can you do it in as few strokes as possible? I love that because it's less stress and it's less fuss and it's less blah, blah, blah that has to go on in your head. So if you get into that habit, ultimately you're teaching yourself how to be less fearful as you navigate this watercolor journey. Step number three in creating a stressless painting is adding details, simple details in a limited color palette as a way to kind of round out your composition quickly. So what I decided here was to grab my pencil and add a few little vines and sprigs of greenery but instead of painting them the traditional colors that you would expect, I'm using a little bit of peach and fluorescent yellow. So you see here, I'm adding just some bigger or medium sized leaves that are mostly peach with little strokes of like that olivey green, which I love by the way, one of my favorite colors in this palette. And I'm going into these late added sketches. They're basically like little vines of tiny leaves. And I'm adding a little bit of the tan and a little bit of the fluorescent yellow. Friends, I don't even call out the color names of my own palette, so. Yeah, if you wanna know the color names, you're gonna just have to look online and look at your packaging if you have the palette, but yeah, I'm not gonna do it. <laughs> so I love it. I love these little additions of really unexpected color that round out the composition. So fun. And they're quick and easy to add because I'm only doing one layer on these. I'm not even going into them with the second layer. So adding these easier to execute details keeps me stressing less and I really like that. Now certainly let's head in, add a little bit more detail, get the liner brush out, get your teeny tiny detail brushes out. Now's the time that you can start adding those details, but this is step number four. And this one is probably the hardest one to get to because you need to stop early. This is an important one. Stop the painting earlier, at least stop the detailing of a painting earlier, way earlier than you think you should. Because here's what I wanna tell you. And I mentioned earlier that there was one really big important point and this is it. Remember how I said there's this like stereotype about the artist and we're just gonna sit in a room and lock ourselves in the room until our masterpiece is completely finished even if it takes 40 hours straight, no sleep. Yeah, no, we don't do that, nor do we need to because that's stressful. You can always come back to a painting. If you're enjoying the details that you're adding, like I'm totally enjoying these details, super fun. You know me and my liner brush. We've got a little love affair going on. But I also know that I can get super, super hyper-focused in a way that's not the best for me or my painting really easily. So I force myself more often than not to stop early, knowing that I can always come back and often do when I have a better kind of frame of mind and fresh eyes. So trust me, friends, this is a big one. Stop early. Okay, number five. Now I said stop early, but that doesn't mean you can't move on to a new part of the painting. And this is my favorite. I think everything's my favorite. I think I say everything's my favorite. I just really love watercolor. Anywho, we're going to add a bold, really scary for some if you've never done this before, but trust me, it's worth being scared. Background. 
Oh yeah, and this is where the watercolor ink comes into play. Actually, I think this is India ink, but whatever. It's permanent, so you know, you put it down and it's not gonna lift and all the things. So what you're gonna do is wet your background first. You're gonna work in smaller chunks. You're gonna work in areas that you know you can keep a wet edge. So get that water down on the page. You almost wanna have puddles on the page and then dab in your ink of choice. I'm using this gorgeous, gorgeous tealy blue. And then you need to work fast because you need to keep a wet edge. If you let any one of those edges dry before you're done with an area, you're gonna get a hard edge. So this is where fast is important because you don't want a hard edge on your background, right? So just be mindful as you're working through this background, keeping those outer edges constantly damp or wet. And as long as you do that, you can continue working out. So sometimes I will spread the background color out from an area that's brighter. And then sometimes I will add ink right to the page, even the dry page, and then start to work out that ink and spread it around and smooth it around the area with a damp brush. This is one of the single most satisfying ways that I personally do backgrounds. Now, this may not be your style and that's okay, but oh friends, it's worth a try. Now, if this scares you on a 12 by 12 inch piece of watercolor paper, try this out on a smaller piece that you might be working on. It's not as scary and it's easier to keep your edges wet, but oh friends, get in there and get this boldness done. It is incredibly satisfying, incredibly quick. So good. All right, friends, how are we feeling about these stressless ideas? Have you had an aha moment? If you've had an aha moment, get into the comments and let me know what it was. And I think it'll be really fun for you to see what everyone else's aha moments were. I really hope we had some or the comment section could get really boring and embarrassing really quickly. Anywho, I'm continuing on with this background. One thing that I love to do when I'm creating backgrounds like this is to, in most areas, leave a little bit of margin between the actual foreground painting, peonies in this case, and the background. And what does that mean? Just a little bit of white area. So I don't always bump my background color right up next to the flowers. And that just visually does something. It creates a little separation. It adds like a little sparkle. I just love it. So give that a try too. And if you're curious and you wanna see more of this kind of background done in some other paintings that I have done on this channel, then I want you to check the link below because, ooh, it's so fun. Okay, I don't know about you, but I feel a little bit out of breath, but you know what? I'd rather be a little bit overwhelmed, but with a painting in front of me that feels really successful than a painting in front of me that just feels tired and overworked and overdone and over, right? So let's recap. If you wanna have a less stressful, fear bashing kind of painting experience, I want you to try working over scale I want you to keep your layers simple and make the most out of the least amount of brush strokes. And number three, I want you to use details, but with limited colors to fill up a composition quickly. I want you to stop early. And last but not least, you've got to try the Bold Brave background because it really brings a painting together quickly. So if you've watched this and you're like, yeah, the one, two, three, four, five stuff, Chrissy, that's cute, but I just want more peonies well head on over to this playlist and I've got all the peony love for you that you could possibly want. So I'm just gonna end by saying happy, happy painting friends.